Have you ever sat through a sermon so bad that you could not believe your ears? Well, you're not alone if you've come to the right place if that's what you're looking for. <laughs> We're gonna dive headfirst into the worst, cringiest, unforgettable sermon that will leave you in utter disbelief. One time God gave me a prophetic word for somebody. It was very anti-scripture. It was very, like... Put on your thinking caps, but first, cue my theme music. All things theology, all things theology, we chop it up properly, without an apology, gotta get that theology to God, hollow because this is how we do it at All Things Theology. Yo, grace and peace, welcome back to an episode of All Things Theology, where this is your host K-Dub, and today we're going to be looking man, at, a, at a pretty bad sermon. Buckle up, strap in, because this is going to be the epitome of eisegesis. This lady's name is Christy Holler. Uh, she goes by the prophetess and was at a prophetic conference just to let you know how bad <laughs> it is. And, and if I mispronounce her name, I do apologize. Uh, so I first heard about this clip from uh, Protestia. They seem to be a lot of my source of uh, <laughs> bad, bad videos. But then I saw James White respond and I said, hey, I know that guy. <laughs> right? He said this. Um, he says, Assigning listening to this for a full hour would be an absolute purgatorial act <laughs> for a professor who wanted to really punish his students. I mean, seriously, why would anyone sit there and endure such incoherent babbling? And I told James, I said, James, although this would be a great hermeneutics class on eisegesis, <laughs> what we're going to see here is, I mean, it makes eisegesis look bad. I mean, guys, I mean, just straight silliness being taught from the pulpit and you guys already know my stance on women pastors so th that is alone but she's going to try to give a justification guys I, I will say this i have never heard i have never heard of the explanation she's going to give so let's look at some clips we got here first i want to address something that was talked about um and that is you have to understand that when god speaks we speak God and I speak all the time. It's just constant, it's a constant conversation. And um, when I'm in worship or I'm listening to a sermon or I'm just going about my daily life, I'm just constantly hearing things. And so for me, like if you're ever like, oh, you do dream interpreting, prophetic healing, all of these things, you're the prophet of the house, like, what's that like? And I'm like, this is what it's like. See all these notes? I don't doubt that she's hearing a lot of things, but I I'm going to make the argument that it's none of this is from God. But she's going to share something like that. Watch this. This is my brain. And in every note is piles of thoughts. Welcome to my brain. Yeah, that's all your brain. Don't blame God for what we're about to hear here. But, of course, see, the charismatic charismania movement can't distinguish between their thoughts and God, which essentially begs the question, who's really God? So... As we were, um, Paul was brought up uh, in the service last night, and uh, Dad had mentioned about it. And uh, I love how God speaks to me. So he was talking to me about um, Eve. And a few weeks ago on Instagram, I saw this thing, and um, I loved it, which is they were saying that Eve, you might wonder how this relates to Paul. You'll understand in a second. Yeah, let's see this. Eve was tempted to eat the fruit. And some might say, why did the serpent go after Eve instead of after Adam because Adam's ultimately the one that had to fall for everything to fall listen to the explanation we're about to hear the serpent if you read back through in um, Genesis about creation you'll know that Eve was tempted by the fruit before she was given her identity she had no <laughs> when, I, when I first heard that answer I thought it was silly and I thought more about it and I was like what she's trying to say is she she was not named yet, right? That's what she's trying to say. She's she's actually named later, which which right, which is true, right? At first she's just called woman, um, and then later she's given the name Eve uh, in chapter three, verse twenty. But if you actually think about what she's trying to say, is there's almost a, some some deficiency in Eve by by creation, right? Um. She had no identity. And this is supposed to make you think of some kind of lack of sufficiency that Eve had, which 
I mean, who created her? I mean, that, that's a problem if this what she's saying is true. But let's keep going on the silliness. She was named after her identity. Her and I would argue not having a name doesn't mean you don't have identity. I mean, being created by God gives you identity. Being the Mago Day, that alone gives you identity. I mean, a name doesn't give you identity per se. Sorry, her name came after giving her her identity. At that point, when the serpent came to her, she was called woman. And so with Paul, when he said, I say women should not preach, that was a part of a generation where women had no identity. <laughs> and he knew that women's identity had to be restored before they could get up and minister. So I just want to encourage you as a woman standing up here and ministering to you, if that's a struggle you have in your heart, I just want to help clarify that for you. <laughs> Where did you get that in the passage, though? I understand that your assertion into the text. Let's say I buy the Eve nonsense you just spewed there. Where is that in 1 Corinthians 14? Right. And in First uh, Timothy, where he says that it's it's totally foreign. And what you have, there is a classic case of eisegesis where she imported into the text what's not there. Didn't the women already have their names by that Paul was speaking to? So, again, that doesn't make sense if you're trying to make some parallel with Eve and these women in the church of Corinth. Something you need to think about before you go on a stage and uh, tell these women <laughs> something to think about. Yeah, we thought about it and it's unbiblical. No one should buy that argument. But in case you just want to get some more hermeneutics and how not to read the Bible, we'll keep listening on. When you get a prophetic word, I just wanted to say that there's other points in the Bible that I would reference if I was going into that sermon. But be careful what words you receive. Because ultimately, God sometimes is asking, he wants to know where your heart is. Because that's where your treasure will lie. And so if you are after division... God might send a prophet that encourages you in division to see what you'll do. Because he says, test me in these things, which means he'll test you in them. Will you choose unity or will you choose division? One time God gave me a prophetic word for somebody. It was very anti-scripture. It was very, like, I, I sat there and I thought, I cannot tell that person that. I, I literally told God. Did, hold on, wait, wait, wait. We're going to let her finish. But did you hear what she just said? Let's go back. She got a word from God that was unbiblical unscriptural let's hear that again by scripture it was very like hold on let, let me let me go back just so we can hear it was very anti-scripture it was let me go back further i want you guys to hear this all in these things which means he'll test you in them will you choose unity or will you choose division one time god gave me a prophetic word for somebody it was very anti-scripture it was very like God gave her a prophetic word for someone that was so anti-scriptural. Everybody should have walked off right there. What are you talking about? God gave you a unbiblical message? I, I sat there and I thought, I cannot tell that person that. I, I literally told God, I can't say that. Your Bible does not even say that. <laughs> and, then, and, then, <laughs> and then you're telling God, no. I, I mean, there's so many contradictions here. I mean, one, God gave you literally she's saying God gave her heresy to preach to somebody. And then she's like, well, no, I'm not going to tell them that. That should have let you know it wasn't God you were hearing from since it contradicted his word. See, this is why it's safe to be a cessationist, right? Charismatics always have to pin between this voice of God and then the word of God. And what if they contradict? And so, so much nonsense here. But this is where we are. Mrs. Eisegesis, we will call her. She is married to the game. Eisegesis. And I, and I realized it came from the same channel that tons of wisdom has come to me. It came to me the same way that tons of things have come to me that I trust. But because I knew the word, and I knew that God is testing the heart of man, he's seeking to and fro who will do his will. I said, I can't say that. What do you mean? Oh, I didn't say that. I said to him, what do you mean by that? And then the clarification that he brought to me, it did not represent at all what I originally thought God was saying to me. And I would have destroyed someone's life had I gone to them and said, well, God told me. So I'm not going to apologize for what God said. That's how prophets act. Huh? I, I'm so confused on what actually happened. So God gave you a word. You, you, you I guess you asked some clarifying questions and it didn't mean what he, I, I don't even know what happened through here. I, <laughs> and that's not how prophecy works. God speaks clearly. 
that's how people act when they get a prophetic word. Well, God said it, so that's how it is. Well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yes, if God said it, yes. That's wh- wh- How else does it work? I mean, when God spoke something, the prophet will receive it and then say, thus saith the Lord. What are you talking about? And no, you should push back. You should test everything against the word. Everything. Even if it comes through the same channel that it's always. So I hear you. I hear you. Test everything against the word. Yes. But if God says it, that's as sure as day. (laughs) So who am I going to test? I mean, as the Bible says, right? God, God can't lie. So if God told you, I mean, I wouldn't even have to check it against his word. It would, God's not going to contradict his word. So that's how I know God didn't tell you this. It could be there to test you to see if you'll choose unity or if you'll choose division. Will you choose to be right or are you willing to be wrong? Be very careful. Yeah, I would echo those sentiments. Be very careful of those who claim to hear from God. Um, 99% of these people do not hear from God. Hey, I hear from God all the time, every day. When I get up and read my Bible, that is God speaking. Uh, Go to the more sure word. Anyways, let's let's keep going. We're going to look at a little crash course in how Christy reads the Bible. And so (laughs) what we're about to hear now is a crash course on how she reads the Bible. Guys, get prepared, because if you thought what we've heard before is bad, you ain't heard nothing yet. You you haven't heard anything anything yet i mean just just get prepared for the most nonsense stuff it's gonna make you ask this wait a minute who are you you know jingle bells jingle bells i'm not going to hell you know what i'm saying just the most silly stuff we're about to hear but let's 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 hear her out though and um how uh how i dream interpret now i'm going to reveal to you why Studying my Bible is so overwhelming for me. Living life is so overwhelming for me. My husband <laughs> yes. and I woke up this morning. We were like, we're like getting things ready to come. He goes outside and he's like, we have been seeing so many blue jays at our house. Like piles Listen to this. of blue jays. And he, so this is how my brain works. He says that I pull up my phone. What does blue jay mean? <laughs> blue jay symbolizes protection, divinity, selflessness, honesty, and kindness in Christianity. We live in a sanctuary of blue birds. We live in a sanctuary of protection, divinity, selflessness, honesty, kindness, and Christianity. This is how my brain works. <laughs> yeah, that might be how your brain works. And sorry if you hear the dog barking. It's probably barking at her nonsense here. <laughs> the dog is barking at her. The dog is the dog is saying this. No, 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 no. Boy, ain't no way, boy. Boy, ain't no way, boy. So... How we're to read the Bible is pretty much experience anything we experience, you know, uh, in life. We are to, you know, you've seen a lot of bluebirds, seeing a lot of squirrels. You read that and then you import that word in the English understanding and then you import that word back into the Bible. Again, this is literally the blueprint of eisegesis. I mean, this is like a like if you want a classic example, this is it. So when I read the story, if we go back um, uh, into the beginning of the story, when Jesus was in Bethany, what do I do? Pull up my phone. What does Bethany mean? Desire for goodness and happiness. Okay, now we know. When Jesus was in a place where there was desire for goodness and happiness, that's where he went. And a house means a dwelling place. So, Bethany, at the house, the dwelling place, of Simon. Simon means to hear, to be heard, and reputation. You see, this is a hyper-spiritualization of every word in the Bible. So essentially, it's it's not, you know, Jesus talking to Peter, it's Jesus talking to a rock, right? You see how silly that is when you actually take it to its logical implication that the words don't, again, words are defined by their context, not you just looking up bluebird and, oh, it means serenity and peace. And then, so every time I see the word blue in the Bible, it just means serenity and peace. And, you know, uh, you, Peter's name means rock, right? Jesus called him the rock. So therefore, Peter, Jesus wasn't actually talking to a man named Peter, but just some rocks. You see how silly that sounds? Yeah, that's her hermeneutic. So he was in the house, in the dwelling place. He was in the place of the desire of goodness and happiness 
but he was in the dwelling place of to be heard and reputation. Girl, hush. That ain't what he talking about. He just literally went to the uh, dwelling place. It's, 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 it's a historical account of where he went. Uh, I'm going to need some uh, Advil, some Tylenol, maybe some Pepto when I get done with this one. But he was in the dwelling place of to be heard and reputation. At the house of Simon the leper. Rotting flesh. So he went to the he went into the land of desire for goodness and happiness. In the dwelling place to hear and rep uh, reputation of the one with rotting flesh. Uh, guys, I want you to re remember something. This is the prophetic conference. So these are the guys who really understand God's voice, right? <laughs> Does that not just sound like the story of Jesus coming to save us? Like, which is what it's talking about. But it's literally the same story. That's the overall story. Jesus came because mm -hmm. we willed to do what we could not do. The place where desire and uh, the desire of goodness and uh, happiness. We will to do what we can't do. So Jesus came to the place of rock. Where is the whole, we? that's where we willed. I, I don't recall that being our willed. I, I, my Bible tells me different about our wills. That there, no one does good. No one seeks God. It's not like we were just going along trying to reach up to God and we're like, you know, you're like a midget trying to dunk the ball. That wasn't us. We weren't the guy, we weren't trying to reach up to God love him with all our heart, but it's like, man, I just can't do it. No, we were rebelling against God. That sounds totally different than the image she just painted there, right? Flesh, where our flesh is rotting. Um, and he sat um, at the table, sitting, when you say it's rest, a place of rest, a table is a place of consuming, filling, a consuming, filling place, a sinner, um, because uh, I think that was in the other translation. Yeah, you're, you, so look, she's not prepared. The, 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 these prophets don't be prepared these days. <laughs> Who needs notes? You're hearing from God. I mean, what's the what's the misdirect here? <laughs> right, this is where I said it's kind of going to maybe jump around a little bit. Yeah. Um, it, or not translation, the in Mark. Trying, um, to, center, uh, trying to read from different translations to find a point. Rated, lost, without hope. Alabaster. What is she uh, talking about? Here we go. So he's in this place <laughs> of the desire for good. Hold on. Where is Daniel Adams when you need him? Out of the life. Out of the life. Come on, girl. Get the sermon right. It's unhappiness. The dwelling place to hear and reputation. So the land, all of the hearts of God, people want to do the right thing. No, they do not. No, they do not. What, what, what is this? No one does good. Not even one. What do you mean? We just we just want to do good. We want to do the right thing. Where where is this in the Bible? This is why she has to, uh, you know, reinterpret all these passages and kind of make her own parable out of historical account. But we dwell in a place of reputation huh? of what we've heard of people. What? And that's where the flesh rots. I have no clue, ma'am, what you're even talking about. What, 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 what is this? Hey, who man's is this? Oh, who man's is this? What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? What are you talking about? We want these good things, but we can't get out of the mindset. This is what rots our flesh. Oh, that person's reputation got ruined. I can't trust them. That person hurt me. I can't move on in life because they hurt me. Huh? It's the reputation. The hurt. No, it's the idolatry. It's the sin against God. What? What? Is, what is going on here? Reputation. Sat in a place of rest. Being filled, a sinner, separated, lost, without hope. So he was sitting with the people who are lost, without and without hope. Alabaster. This is where. Spirit of God hit me so strong. Well, we see what happens when the Spirit of God hits you strong. Well, I mean, how do you know this was a true message from God? You said earlier he told you to say something unbiblical. Well, I mean, I, let's hear it. 
and alabaster is a stone. And uh, the alabaster box, if you look, when I looked it up, it said, um, so like the word alabaster can be a vase or it can, uh, a stone casket. Okay. I thought, wow, that's really interesting. (laughs) Uh, Fragrant, consuming your senses, has the ability to cover and take over. Oil, transfer of the spirit. Yeah, that's all I got there. That's all I can handle. Uh, Excuse me while I go to the bathroom and (laughs) yeah, vomit, I guess. But that that was terrible. Terrible exegesis again. One of the worst sermons I've ever heard. Thank you, Protestia, for sharing that. (laughs) I told him I had to review that. But again, one is why women women shouldn't teach. Um, There's literally, I've never heard a biblical sermon from any one of these women preachers. And two, why we shouldn't go to people who claim to be hearing God all the time apart from his word. Go to the scriptures. Hope this video was enlightening somehow. Hopefully you got something good out of it. Maybe I regret doing this. (laughs) Till the next time, grace and peace. Yo, grace and peace. Thank you for watching another episode of All Things Theology. If you enjoyed what you heard today, go on and give me a like. Subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell. I promise to give you weekly lives, videos, interactions, exposing false teachers, sharing with you, the viewer, my theological beliefs, things about the culture and the Bible. So if you're here for that, come on and join us. Also, if you would like to support this channel financially, you can do so by becoming a Patreon member or a YouTube member. Links are in the description below. You can see content before it drops. You can also have Q&A sessions with also other Patreon members, YouTube members as well. So if you would like that, hit the description link in below. Baby.